When you are writing a research, you need to be aware of two terms. Your research needs to be reliable and valid. And in this video, I would like to discuss these two terms to you because they are very important. It is, I have seen it many times that a student who is writing a degree thesis comes to a seminar where he is supposed to defend his thesis and now the examiners ask two questions. Why do you think that your research is reliable and why do you think your research is valid? So let's examine what is hidden behind the reliability and validity of a research. And we have a definition of a reliability here. Reliability refers to whether your data collection techniques and analytic procedures would reproduce consistent findings if they were repeated on another occasion or if they were repeated by another researcher. This means to have a reliable research, meaning that if someone else had decided to select similar sample as you and let's say similar data collection techniques, similar analytical techniques to evaluate the data, if this other person on a different time would produce a similar findings to yours. So the idea is simple and now there are certain biases and errors that can influence the reliability of our research. So let's take a look at them. First of all, there is the participant error. This is any factor which adversely alters the way in which a participant performs. Let's say that we are doing an interviews with our participants. Now we are deciding about the time of the day when we are interviewing these our respondents. For, well, for instance, if we would select to interview them at 11 in the morning, they can produce different answers than if we would interview them at one in the afternoon because they are going to be after lunch, they are going to be more calm, maybe more happy. So be careful so that no participant error occurs in your research. Secondly, we have the participant bias. This is any factor which produces a false response. Let's stick to our example that we are interviewing employees within some organization. Let's say we would decide to interview them in these open offices. It, they are very common nowadays where a lot of people are sharing one office. And you would be interviewing your participant in the middle of such open office. This participant can be afraid that his answers will be overheard by someone else. So the participant may be sort of falsely too positive with his answers because of this being afraid of being overheard by his manager or someone else. So again, be aware of this. Then we have a researcher error. This is any factor which alters the researcher's interpretation. For instance, if you are doing again interviews and you plan all of your interviews, let's say you are doing eight of them, you plan all of them within one day then such researcher error can occur because after conducting six interviews, you are going to be very tired and in the last two interviews, you may not be asking the questions in a proper way. So maybe a better choice would be to have two interviews every day throughout four days. Finally, we have the researcher bias and this is the most common one. This is any factor which induces bias in the researcher's recording of responses. I mean, we as a researchers are simply a human beings and as a human beings, we are being subjective. So we may interpret the results that we got from our respondent in a subjective way. So be aware of it and try to stay objective when you are doing these, for instance, interviews. Now, when you are on a seminar while defending your thesis, ask about why do you think your research is reliable? You should address these four points, these two errors and two biases, and justify why they did not occur in your research so that your research is reliable. Now we come to the validity of a research and we have three different kinds of validity. We have construct validity, internal validity and external validity. So let's start with the construct one. This is maybe the simplest one. The construct validity is concerned with the extent to which your research measures what it claims to measure. Behind this fancy sentence, 
are all of these methodological choices that we have made while designing our research. So the justification of why have we selected this research nature, this particular research strategy, and so on and so on. Now let's be more practical. If you are asked on a seminar while defending your research, why do you believe that your research is achieving the construct validity? Your answer should have sort of a top-down approach. So you would be like, so, okay, I wanted to research the IT skills of employees. This was my research idea. To do it, no one before has done it, so I had to select exploratory research nature. That makes sense, right? I had to be the first one to explore this phenomena. Now, exploratory research nature implied then inductive research approach. So you see these two work together. Then inductive research approach uh, sort of again implied quantitative methods and you continue this way so from the top or, or the most general things you justify it to the most concrete ones and that way you will really prove that your research is achieving the construct validity second of all we have the internal validity Internal validity is established when your research demonstrates a causal relationship between two variables. And this is especially true if our research strategy is experiment. Because in experiment, we clearly have to define the independent variable and dependent variable. And then we are examining the relationship between these two. So what internal validity is asking about is um, why are you making this assumption from the early beginning that this relationship is existent? So let's say that we choose as an independent variable the educational level of our customer support. It's these guys who are answering the phone when the customer has a problem. And as a dependent variable, we select customer satisfaction level. So our assumption is that the more educated the support employees will be, then the happier the customers will be and the more satisfied they will be. What is internal validity asking about is why are you making this assumption? Why do you believe that this relationship between these two variables exists? So if you are asked about the internal validity, this is the point that you should justify. Finally, we have the external validity. External validity is concerned with whether a study's research findings can be generalized to other relevant settings or groups. We are going to discuss this more in the later modules when we come to the data collection techniques and especially sampling. This is about sampling. When you are making a research, you are choosing a sample from a population because you simply cannot research the whole population. You have to select most likely some sample. What external validity is asking about is whether when you research this sample and you make some findings from this sample, whether the, these findings will be generalizable to the whole population. And the, it, it is essentially asking about the represent, representativeness. It's a hard word to pronounce. Whether your sample is really representative. For instance, you are having a multiple case study and now you are selecting 10 companies from one particular field. Now the question is, have you selected a successful companies or unsuccessful companies? Have you selected a mixture of successful and unsuccessful companies to have a more representative sample? So you see, when you are asked about the external validity, you should justify the choice of your sample and that's all and you, now you will have all of these points justified you will say why your research is reliable why it is valid from the construct perspective why is it valid from the internal perspective and finally why is it valid from the external perspective